Hello, my name is Miss Anderson, and I am here today to talk to you about an artist named Pablo Picasso. Um, he was an artist that was born in Spain, and um, he was born in 1881, and he was one of the greatest artists of the 21st century. He was born in Spain, and his father was an art teacher encouraging his son to paint and draw and he wanted Picasso to become a great artist one day which is really what happened. Um, his style changed over the period of his life more than any other great artist. Um, he was always trying new and different things and here is a painting that he did when he was only 15 years old. Pretty amazing. And then this painting here was done when he was 57 years old. So there's quite a bit of difference in these two paintings. Um, so let's talk about how he got from here to here. Okay? Picasso um, started out young. Here is a self-portrait. Uh, that means a picture that he drew of himself. And some say that this painting was um, influenced by the style of African masks. But um, that's how he saw himself. Um, and he moved to France when he was 19 years old. Whoops, I went the wrong way with that, sorry. And um, he basically studied other artists and their painting styles. And um, then something happened. He had a best friend who um, died, and it made him very sad. And Picasso's paintings started to take on a certain color, a dark blue, um, sad mood. Here's one that was very famous. Here's another one. Um, his subject matter was of families that were sad, suffering, um, poor families, and... Um, the death of his friend really put him in this mood for quite some time. It was about four years old, or four years. Here's another one. It's kind of hard to see this one. Um, but it's made with a lot of dark blue colors. And um, <coughs> definitely dark, sad, not a very happy painting. Here's another one he did that kind of creeps kids out. Um, I saw an older lady who's got um, kind of like a sick eye. But it was painted with blue colors, nice and dark, still in that same sad mood. I believe this one was a painting of his friend who did die. Um, and then a little bit later, his mood changed. They call this, um, by the way, that other series of paintings, there are a lot more. Um, I'm just showing you some examples. And art history people actually call that Picasso's blue period when he was sad and painted with so much blue. This period of time um, was another three or four years when he started to hang out with people who were in the circus. He thought they were very interesting because they traveled from town to town and so he started to paint them and they wear costumes, you know, for their job. But you'll notice as we look through these they start to look um, orange and pink. So art history people started to call this um, the rose period. It was a little bit happier time. Um, not everybody looked so sad. This was one of his close friends, also done in the rose period. Sorry, there was a piece of colored pencil on there. Uh, more people from the circus. You'll see the color pink and orange. See, they have real interesting costumes. So his paintings got a little more colorful um, as he got along, and then he learned about something called Cubism. And that was a time when a lot of, um, well, not a lot, but a few artists were getting together, and they decided that they were going to break things up. They were going to change the way that they looked at the space in their art. So um, here was a real famous painting by Picasso, and it's called The Three Musicians. Um, it's very hard to even tell that these are people. We see these kind of um, square or cubed people, um, figures. The legs are rectangles. The feet are squares. They, this one's holding some music. This one's got a shape that looks like it could be a guitar. And then this one has a horn, a clarinet. 
of sorts. So he's, his artwork started to change. Um, it started to not look so much like the way things really looked. And here's an example of the way he started to use color. Um, when he started painting people especially, he didn't always paint them skin color. He did some definitely different colors. And with cubism, he also started to divide them up differently. And in looking at this lady, if I put my hand over here, it looks like a side profile of this lady. Like she is looking over here at something really important. Okay, she's looking at this big purple crayon. Um, whoops. <laughs> but then if I take my hand away on the other part here, he's painted a front view where she's looking straight out at us. So that was one of the things that he did um, during his exploration of cubism. He put two different views of faces together, and he definitely used different colors. Um, this woman is orange and green. Her hair is red, purple, green. Um, and she is definitely looking different than some of his first paintings. Here's another one, um, cubism. You can tell. We have the front view where she's looking straight at us and the side view where she's looking over to the side. You see the side of her nose, side of her chin and her eye. And then her body is starting to be broken up into instead of soft curves, we've got a lot of um, rectangular sort of forms. Here's a lady um, taking a little rest on her book or her pillow. Maybe she's at the library studying hard, but you'll notice and I don't even know if you can see the lady, but here are her arms. Here's a hand. hand. Her eyes are looking down. These are her two eyes. Half of her face is blue. Half of her face is red and yellow. And down here is her mouth and her nose. And this is her hair. And she's just kind of leaning over and resting. So you'll notice that he definitely has a different way of using his color. Here's another cubism um, portrait. But this is all looking forward, at least um, the way I can see it. But notice how he's sort of used lines to break up the face. And then again, we also have that use of color that is not traditional. It's not normally how you would see color being used, especially around this time um, in history. Here's another one, um, side view once again, and then you have the front view, eyes as well. Um, different use of color. Lots of different colors and shapes inside the face. Um, and here's my favorite. This is a sad woman. I know that because she's crying. And you'll say, well, how in the world do you know that, Miss Anderson? Well, there's some tears worked into this design. She's also, here's her mouth. She's holding on to a tissue, um, perhaps to wipe her tears. Maybe she's at a funeral or something. And um, But this face is cubism as well. It's very broken up into shapes and angles. And so Picasso created his art much differently than any other artist um, at the time. Some other artists were doing cubism, but they weren't necessarily doing people. So Picasso was very different um, in that respect. And he also did many, many, many different other kinds of artwork that I have to mention. Um, he did sculptures. He did collages. He did all kinds of art. And he lived to be 92 years old. He was a great painting uh, or painter, and he even made costumes and sceneries for play plays. So it's a lot of fun to see his work. Um, there is a very famous sculpture downtown in Chicago that he created. I don't have a picture right now, but um, what we're going to do with this example is we're going to create our own portrait, okay? And when we draw our portrait, we don't necessarily want it to look um, normal or the way that you would normally see a portrait drawn by someone. So it's important that you take a minute to think about how you want your picture to look, what kinds of things you want in your picture, okay? So I'm just going to start out, maybe I'll do the thing with uh, the two different views, okay? So this I have my side view of my face. Maybe I'll erase that line. I'm just going to start drawing it, okay? You don't have to do the side view and the front view, but it kind of makes things interesting. So that's how I have chosen to do my artwork. Notice I'm drawing everything first, okay? I'm going to do the side view of an eye over here. 
looking that way for sure. And then maybe I'll put my other eye over here because with cubism, it doesn't matter where things are placed on the face. Okay, in fact, you can change it up as much as you want. And I truly think the most important thing about Picasso, or about cubism in general, and Picasso, is the color. So I'm just sort of planning this out right now, but um, I will come back and add some color to it. And I don't want my design to influence your artwork too much. This artwork is going to become our Art to Remember, which is... Um, a program where your artwork goes home and your parents get to buy things made out of your artwork. So um, do good work. Let your picture reflect your style and um, what you want to create as an artist. We're going to take a couple weeks to finish this and then they will be sent in to a company and then your parents will have the chance to go online and order stuff. Okay. So here's my basic drawing. I think the next thing I might do is add some marker um, and or maybe oil pastels. And I don't want you to really be influenced by this, but I just want to show you there are a lot of different ways to break up the space or the face. And certainly, like Picasso, that very famous artist, I want you to practice with different shapes and different colors. Today we learned that colors don't necessarily have to be um, exactly how they look in real life. And so the picture that I want you to create should also use colors that don't necessarily have to be realistic. So have a great time. I hope you come up with something wonderful. Um, always plan it out. If you want to use your sketchbook, you can plan it out first. Uh, plan it out first in your sketchbook or with pencil, and then go ahead and start using whatever media you choose. Um, I'll probably use markers on this one because to me that's quick, fast, and easy, and it has a lot of bright color. So thanks for watching. Have a great time creating your Picasso self-portrait. It's all about you.